Brothers and sisters, misses and misters, welcome back to the Dented Can Show. He's Max, I'm Doby. Today, lock him up because we got a big topic to talk about, the B word, bully. Oh, that's such a topic word today that everybody talks about. They're being bullied and bullied this, bullied that. And uh, it is something that we both have rich experience today. So there will be some passion exchanged on these here airwaves, brother. So bullies. First bully in your life was My Russ. My father, Russ. Brother Russ. But Brother Russ at church, Doby, I want you to know you are so lucky to be Brother Russ's yeah, son. Yeah, we're going to talk about religion and God and, and things that my brother, or my father was Brother Russ at church, and he found church after he was a biker. He rode with the Outlaws Motorcycle Gang, and we as kids hoped that he would just be a biker because we knew he was going to be a maniac. But in church, he would be this guy with flowery prayers and wonderful and say, wow, maybe he changed. And then he'd come home and beat the crap out of everybody, including the dog. And we thought, oh, boy, it's Jekyll and Hyde. And he was a bully. He never hurt or attacked anybody that was his equal, that, that could fight back in any way. And he would just beat the shit out of my brother, Larry, who's two years older, but he was 10 at the time, and I was eight, and I never lived with them. We'll tell our whole story later, but I would, I would visit them in spurts, and it got to the point where I knew he was a bully, and I, as there was a rage and an anger against bullies. You might kick my ass, but I'm not going to let you bully me. I know you have stories, too, and it got to the point where I was about 16 or 17, and I knew my father's modus operandi. He wasn't a huge guy, but he would beat up bigger guys in bar fights and stuff. By He would he would rant and rave, and then he would get quiet or turn and cough, and then he'd come up with a haymaker out of nowhere, a sucker punch, basically, and lay him out, and then everybody would back off like he's this big, tough guy. So he, he said, step out of my office, and he does some big you know, thing he was mad about and he got right in my face and he yelled and screamed and the spittle was going down my cheek and he finally turned around like he was going to cough and I knew that's when the haymaker was going to come and he turned around and I said, if you hit me, I will kill you. I am your son. I will physically choke the living shit out of you. And there was an anger and a rage and he backed away like the little bitch that he is and was. That's the other B word. <laughs> bitch, exactly. And he never, ever approached me in an angry way again like he he, the dog he whimpered away with his tail between his legs and it was the anger and rage that he lit that came back to bite him and that's a minor story i know we have a lot of others and you especially i'm going to back off because you're the king of this but i yes i had a lot of experience with bullies and i don't like them i'm the king of it you mean i'm a bully no you are the king of dealing with it and i know it hurts everybody and we're the little kid inside we didn't ask to be bullied and the, does anybody bully you that's your equal that you maybe can fight gee I, I don't know if i could take this guy but no they're always someone that knows they can pummel you well, i think that i think that's the you know that's the key ingredient of a bully is you know bully to me is synonymous with coward mm-hmm. absolutely because uh a bully for any age, even if there's a, a young kid watching this right now, a bully is a coward all day long, okay? Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, bullies in school. And a couple of stories that come to mind. I've always been a kind of a you know tall, lanky guy, mm-hmm. not a muscle man, you know, none of that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, but carried pain with me, okay? Sure. That would be uncorked in, un, in epic proportions if... Uh, if Someone crossed the line, as you like to say, poked the tiger. Don't poke the tiger, baby. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, one of those things, one of those times I remember uh, there was a big kid in, in school in P.E. class. Uh, you know, we all had to wear, I don't know about in your school in Wisconsin, but in Iowa, we had to wear standard issue white T-shirts with blue gym shorts. That was the middle school you know, everybody had, didn't matter what brand it was, that okay. was white t-shirt, blue gym shorts, sneakers, right? Uh, we were playing wiffle ball inside a gymnasium because it was raining or something. Like okay. That. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and uh, we were switching, you know, offense to defense. And uh, this particular kid took the ball bat and like a, a roundhouse with the ball bat hit the back of my leg as hard as he could. Mm-hmm. Big kid, you know, real big kid. I sure. wasn't a big kid. Mm-hmm. I will never forget that. Here I am all these years later. Um, oh, it's like it's yesterday. It's, I, it, no, I know. I really, really did. I mean, oh, my gosh. It Probably for most of those people that were in the room, the other students, it was like watching a horror movie, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, I remember the, uh, the gym teacher coming and finally grabbing me by the ears, big targets, uh, and tossing me by my ears off this kid who was wailing, crying. 
because I, you know, I won't go into detail because I know that uh, this is a community where they don't uh, want to talk about violence on YouTube, and I respect that, you know. Um, but at the same time, it was very violent, okay. And I don't know where that came from, other than the pain, okay. Mm -hmm. That that uh, I'm not proud of that. Even looking back as a middle school kid, I'm not proud of that. Uh, but I didn't like getting hit either. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't think that was fair either to get hit on the as hard as he could and leave a welt on the back of my leg. Sure. And laugh thinking everybody else would thought, you know, he was trying to get a laugh. Mm -hmm. Everybody, hey, watch me do this. You know, big kid. And sure. He got his ass kicked really bad in front of the entire in front of everyone in the gymnasium. You know, uh, another time was, uh, you know, it was it was a really big thing in Iowa in our school. To go if, if you know, the, the part of your neck that sticks out from the back of your hair to your shirt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to walk and slap as hard as you could slap that part of the neck. That was a big thing for I don't know if it came from a television show. Hmm, or, I don't, that didn't catch on in Wisconsin, <laughs> but I, I'm not saying Wisconsin is the hip place of the universe. <laughs> right. But a weird thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the, the real popular wealthy you know, that group, I wasn't in that group. I lived mm -hmm. in housing at the time with my mom and my brother. Uh, but you know, real popular. He saw me walking and he came up and did that as, as the classes were, you know, in between classes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again, unleashed the fury. It was unbelievable. Right. Yeah. And, um, I don't know where that came from uh, that, you know, that, that anger, it was but, building for well, years, but the bullies, you know, uh, I always dealt with them head on like that. Me too. You know, and even in, even in school and that's a hard thing to do. And, and now schools, you know, all these years later, I was on a school board, you know that. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, that we, we never wanted anybody to, you know, to fight back or take a stand or any of that. There's, there's a few of us that did us older guys that were on the board were like, you know, when a parent would come in and talk about their kid being bullied and the parent would be in tears because the kid would come home in tears and bullying is a very, very big problem. You know, it's a huge, huge, it's problem. never going to get better. And I think now in this cyber age, you know, Oh, it's a whole different level, whole different level yeah. texts and finding the, Oh, yeah. I feel so, so bad for those kids. I do too. And, and, and you know, I want those kids to know it. Like if I had a, a kid that I had to, uh, to help out, um, I would as the parent, uh, I would get involved as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And there's still a part of me <laughs> that would like to go knock on that bully's door and talk to that bully's father or parents. You know, if there's no father, mother, whatever, and say, hey, this needs to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me, it needs to stop. Uh, and you can't do that either nowadays because you don't know if somebody's going to pull out a gun. Oh, yeah, you have no clue. You know, so so we live in a weird time. And uh we just want to acknowledge it does exist. It does. It does. Absolutely it has exist. always. It will yeah. always. Yeah. And uh, the the best way to deal with it is to stay away from those individuals. Quite honestly, that's the best way to, to deal with it. Uh, and then if it's out of control, there's physical harm or emotional harm. You got to go to the authorities. You know, you have to in those instances for help. And I know that that isn't always going to solve the issue, unfortunately. Is there any episodes of bully remorse that you have seen? That I've seen or that I, I, I Both. took part in? Took part in, I, I, seen... I feel bad about what, uh, just those two examples, there were other ones. There were other ones in my lifetime, mm -hmm. you know? Had a kid, never forget this, his name was Neil, in fifth grade. You know how we all had the trays in school? For lunch? They had, yeah, the trays that had the little pockets. Compartments, yes. Yeah, compartments mm -hmm. sure. and little... Little slot for the fork and the knife Milk over there. And the knife and right. the fork and the slop. And you could carry it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, Neil, um, when I got to the end of the line, uh, was a couple grades ahead of me, uh, knocked my tray out of my hand so it went on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, one of these episodes, even as a fifth grader, you know, I uh, completely lost my mind. And I got in trouble, you know, because I was the person that, because usually they see it. Uh, you know, the person who's reacting to the bully sometimes gets in trouble, especially if you get the upper hand. Then the bully turns into the victim, which in all reality, the boy, bully is the victim in the first place, you know, in their mind, you know? Yeah. Boy, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I have one episode of a guy that played Major League Baseball. I wanted to play baseball in the worst way. 
my whole life. And his name was Todd Froworth, and he's not living anymore, but this is a true story. He was a grade ahead of me in high school, and I went to a Catholic high school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and you had to buy books. I think you do now in public schools, but back then, the public schools, you got books free. Catholic schools, you had to buy books. And there was an English book which had gone out. They, they had a new one. for I was an incoming freshman, but I didn't know that. So he sold me the previous year's English book. I don't know what it was, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever it was. And I found out that it wasn't the right book and that he scammed me. So I went back to him, and he was probably a foot, foot and a half taller than me at the time. And I said, you know, give me the money back. You know, you didn't, I'm not going to do as a smarmy, like the jocks can be, like I never wanted to be, like the jocks. And one thing led to another. And finally, I had him grab them by his throat and say, give me the money back. So, of course, a nun came and peeled me off of this guy who's a foot and a half taller. And I said, I'll give you your money back. And he just whined like the little bitch that he was. And he ended up playing Major League Baseball. And everybody looks at him as the star of our high school. And I, uh, I'm fighting to pay my rent every month. So I guess that's the revenge <laughs> that I had. You know, it's a, there's anger and rage and all those things kind of come out there. And okay, it was a book. It was five or ten bucks. I, but again, what bubbles inside you and me is what made us take it to that higher level and make it way more important than it needed to be. So let's think about let's think about it from the bully's perspective. Okay? Okay. So were the bullies, uh, pick any one of them, were the bullies dented cans? Were they were they experiencing something in their lives that uh, that caused them to to be that way? Probably. Were you ever a bully? Absolutely. I've been a bully in my own house. Um, regrettably, you know, uh, as uh, like if I was having a bad mood or in a bad mood or something like that. Uh, and when my wife or kids uh, needed me to, to do something. Sometimes when I wasn't at my best, I would say something that would, a bully would say, in other words, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like brush them off. Like what I figure it out yourself type of thing. Uh, to me, that's a bully, you know, when you're not being supportive, when you're not, uh, truly interacting with somebody in a healthy way, you know, if you're, <laughs> you don't have to treat someone horribly, you know? And I think that's one of the things that, that bullies do, you know? They're, they're, they're not, they don't have any empathy for anybody else. I appreciate you sharing that story. I got to share a story right now. And I'm tearing up and I'm, this is not for effect. I'm really sorry. And if we edit it out and never show it, it's okay. There's a kid named Paul Ritter. I was about 10 or 11. And he was about seven or eight. He was a kid in the neighborhood. And he was a smarmy little prick. Just everybody couldn't stand him. You know, he's goody, goody two shoes. Not that bad people wear one shoe. But this little kid was a punk. And on the way to school one day, he was just doing something, and I, I tripped him on the ice. I don't know why I did it. I really feel bad about it to this minute, Max. And he got up, and he screamed, and he cried, and I could feel the pain in his soul and said, you're a big bully, and Speed Racer is going to take care of you. <laughs> and it sounded because Speed Racer was a big show on TV. Mm -hmm. And I could see the pain in his eyes, and I felt so bad about it, and I feel bad about it now. And I said I was sorry to him then, and every time I saw him after that, until he moved away, I said, I was sorry, and I really am. And that one little incident, I don't know why I did it, man, but it, 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 it made me feel pain, and I didn't, I didn't intend to hurt him. I lashed out without thinking, and it was one second, man, and I feel terrible about it now, and I'm sorry. So maybe the bullies are sorry, too, and they don't know how to say it. I think you're right. I think you touched a nerve, and I think... Uh... Wow. Thank you for sharing I'm that. sorry, man. How do you come up with that? You know, we're not here to be maudlin and sad, but you have stories like that in your own life, I know. And sometimes there's nowhere to go to share it. We want to be the community where you do share it. And one thing we said when we started this, Max, we're going to, we're going to end with a positive on every episode, no matter how deep in the caravan or crevice in the uh, abyss that we get. We got pretty deep today. So I'm sorry if you tuned out already. And if you're with us, thank you. What's our positive ending for today? I'm going to say the positive ending is uh, when there is a bully at work, when there is a bully at home, uh, make sure it's not you first. Make sure it's not you. Yeah. Uh, but help those that are that are struggling or scared uh, because uh, all of us have experienced bullies and maybe some of us have been the bully, uh, but it's time to stop. Thank you. I'm sorry, Paul Ritter. I really am.